All righty. Welcome everyone to the National Catholic College Admission Association's College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check the schedule on the website. All of the presentations are being recorded and will be available anytime at stripescan.com nccaa. And I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter, and that's going to be Salve Regina University. Hi, everyone. My name is Nick Albanese with Salve Regina University, located um, on the cliffs of the Atlantic Ocean in beautiful Newport, Rhode Island. Um, so let me just pull my screen share up here. Um, Salve Regina is founded by the Catholic Sisters of Mercy who date back to a woman named Catherine McCauley in the 1800s. And the sisters had this reputation as being the walking nuns because they broke from tradition. Um, they got out of the convent, they went into the streets of Dublin, Ireland where they were founded. And if they saw people that needed help, kind of regardless of what their background is, how they looked, how they prayed, um, they wanted to help them. And so they formed a number of um, institutions throughout the world um, orphanages, schools, uh, job training centers to um, help people get back on their feet um, and have a meaningful life. Our mission statement um, is one of the things I treasure most about our university. I won't read the entire thing for you, but the last line, our students work for a world that is harmonious, just, and merciful. I think that really encapsulates the goal of a Salve Regina education. Um, so we admit students from a wide variety of backgrounds um, who have a just diverse array of interests, um, but they share that uh, sort of goal in, in common that they want to make the world around them a little bit better, a little bit more just, harmonious, and merciful. There are five areas that the sisters feel our students should really know something about, some of the, the deepest concerns in society, and, and that is um, climate change and environmental justice, immigration reform, nonviolence as a baseline for behavior, anti-racism, and women's rights. So we have just over 2,100 undergraduate students who are studying a little more than 60 undergraduate majors, as well as about 10 accelerated business programs and some um, dual enrollment and partnership programs. Um, some of our most popular majors include really any form of business, criminal justice, biology, chemistry, psychology, social work, um, and of course, our direct entry nursing program. We actually guarantee the clinical rotations for our nursing students, so they will finish on time in four years. But in addition to uh, those popular majors, we also have some pretty unique and interesting majors. Um, we have, for example, a Bachelor of Arts in Dance. That was always our most popular club. And so we're so happy that that's a major on campus. Um, and I think probably one of our most unique majors is cultural and historic preservation, where students study the built environment they learn how to tell stories about objects, how to archive them. They learn about um, archeology span and preservation practices and techniques. Um, and it makes sense that we have such an emphasis on studying history, on taking care of historic properties and buildings and artifacts, um, because we're located in one of the best kept historic districts in New England, uh, the Bellevue Avenue Historic District. And if you're watching a show on HBO right now called The Gilded Age, um, all of those buildings, that architectural style from the 1890s or the Gilded Era, um, that is what our campus looks like. Um, half of our buildings date back to the 1890s. There were these estates uh, that we have converted and combined into one campus and blended in with modern buildings. Um, so besides being a beautiful campus, uh, we have uh, a level two arboretum. We have an open campus that is completely connected to the world around us. Um, and that's also part of that mercy value system. We don't want to be gated off and closed off. We want to be a part of the community. And so there are so many opportunities for our students to get a broader perspective. While we are a small university, our students kind of get out of the bubble that college can sometimes become. They get very involved in the town. Um, they come to Salve from all over the country. Only 15% of our students are actually from the state of Rhode Island. Um, 
And then about a third of our students will study abroad by junior year. Um, and every major at Salve, including nursing, has that ability to study abroad. But on campus, there are so many things to do. We have um, just over 70 led student organizations, uh, 20 Division III varsity sports. We're in the sailing capital of the world. So that's pretty popular. But we also have some pretty, pretty competitive club sports um, like rugby and equestrian. Uh, we have the Pell Center for International Relations and Public Policy, uh, which is a think tank on campus. We bring in thought leaders, speakers, ambassadors, diplomats, um, you know, you name it, folks that, that work in um, improving the lives of others and in public policy to campus from all over the world. Um, and all of our students participate in community service. In terms of admission to Salve, most students kind of fall between a B plus and an A minus GPA. Uh, we are fully test optional, and we really mean that uh, for every major, including nursing. So um, no need to submit test scores at Salve. We do a very holistic evaluation. Uh, we're a member of the common application, and we will waive that fee for students that are coming to us from outside of the Northeast or who qualify for a fee waiver. There are three times when you can apply to Salve, November 1. Um, nursing majors do need to apply by that November 1 deadline, as well as January 5 and February 1. Um, nearly all of our students receive some form of financial aid, and students that identify as students of color or Latino um, have the opportunity to qualify for scholarships that could potentially cover up to full tuition. Um, check out salve.edu slash visit if you'd like to learn about opportunities to visit our campus in person, as well as check out some of our workshops that we've got going on um, to help prepare you for the college going process. Uh, you can also scan this QR code to meet your counselor, and we're very happy to meet with you and have conversations um, about things like should I submit my scores, um, or possibly if you'd like to interview. So thank you so much for listening to me tonight, and I will turn it over to our next speaker. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Loyola University, New Orleans. And it's been a minute since I've done a virtual fair. There's my volume. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Kate. Uh, I'm a senior associate director down here at Loyola University in New Orleans. Um, you probably maybe heard from some of the other Loyola's tonight if you went to different sessions. Uh, we are very separate entities. Um, we do appreciate and respect each other, um, but we all have different um, highlights, different sizes, different um, types of students on campus, different majors and degrees. So let's talk a little bit specifically about New Orleans. I'm gonna get my screen shared here for you guys. All right, so that first um, screen, that first picture you're gonna see there, that's the front of campus. So as you can see, the historic streetcar line um, runs right in front of our campus. The streetcar is what you see in lots of those images of New Orleans. It does take you um, straight down to the French Quarter, which is I think what everybody thinks of <laughs> when they think of us. Um, and you can catch it right out front of campus. It's about a 15 minute ride to that um, part of town. A little bit more about Loyola. Um, we should be one of the smaller colleges you hear from tonight. So we're around 3,000 undergraduate students. Um, we're a small private college with a big focus on teaching. You're going to be taught by your professors, no grad students, things like that. That's going to come with small class sizes as well. So as I tell students, you can walk around our campus, um, open the, most of the camp classroom doors on campus, and you'll find 20 students in there. Um, we have tons of majors and options, and I'll talk about a little bit of those um, in just a few minutes. Um, we also have tons of clubs and activities. I tell students you're going to find a whole new world of things to do on college campuses once you become a student and find all sorts of great things to get involved in. The big thing I like to point out, one of my favorite statistics is down at the bottom. Um, we are about 50% students of color on campus, as well as about 25% uh, first generation students on campus. And we are about 50-50 on in-state, out-of-state. So lots of students coming from all across um, the country and as well as the world to be a part of New Orleans. So New Orleans is a special place. Um, I think most people have heard um, of us in some capacity. So there's lots of different neighborhoods. This map is a little quirky fun, um, but it does give you an idea that we give directions by the river. <laughs> so you kind of follow the river throughout New Orleans. Um, as you can see, we're over here on the left. We're in the uptown neighborhood of New Orleans. We are next door to Tulane, so you do kind of have double college campuses, as well as a park across the street, and then really cute shops, neighborhoods. Um, you're very much going to be part of the city itself and part of the community um, within our college campus. 
Um, outside of that, you'll see you can kind of follow through the old neighborhoods. You, you get to our downtown. That's where the Saints and the Pelicans facilities are. Um, it's also where several of our major business hubs are. So if you're interested in doing one of our many internships while you're a student, um, you'll be probably headed to the CBD at some point in time. And then on the other side of that is the traditional French Quarter. We stuck a nice little airplane up there at the top. We're about 15, 20 minutes from the airport. Um, there's tons going on in New Orleans all the time. Our city is not only, our students not only love our city and they love our school. So if you're going to be part of New Orleans, if you're going to be part of Loyola, you're going to be part of the city of New Orleans. So right now we're actually getting ready for Jazz Fest. There's a fantastic lineup this year. French Quarter Fest will kick off right before that. Um, Crawfish Fest was last weekend. <laughs> it just depends what you want to do and be a part of. We're also a film hub, so we have uh, movies filming regularly on campus. There's always tons of music, concerts, events, whatever you'd like to be a part of. As far as academics, like I said, tons of majors and options out there. I don't have a slide with all of them on there, so we put some of our more popular ones. Um, once you apply to Loyola, you are welcome to major in anything within the College of Arts and Sciences or the College of Business. The only reason I don't mention music and media is because a lot of those degrees are gonna require a portfolio or audition um, in addition to your original application items. These are some of the bigger or more popular majors within each field. Um, I do like to point out in our arts and sciences, it's listed a little, little bit of a confusing way, but there are pre-health and pre-law focuses. They're not official degrees, but they do come with dedicated advisors that work with you throughout that process. And we do have a law school and some students do participate in a fast track program that actually saves you a year of time um, between undergrad and law. Outside of that, um, we do put on here, I make you guys aware, we do have an honors program if students are interested in participating in that, and then you're going to be taking our core curriculum throughout. Um, we're a common application school. We also have our own application. There's no preference. Whichever one makes your life easiest is the one I would advise you to use. Um, you'll see on here in items um, required, you will not see test. We are test blind. So we are not going to use your SAT or ACT score as part of our admissions or scholarship process. Uh, we've already heard a November 1 deadline. I'm sure you've heard a lot of November deadlines tonight, but November 15 is going to be our early action deadline. If you think you might want to be part of our honors program, um, apply for our social justice scholarship, or as a music or performance student, um, potentially be considered for a full tuition music scholarship, I would advise applying by that November 15 deadline to be in the front of consideration for those. Um, I know it seems kind of silly, but I do want to remind everybody this is an important and critical time as you are entering your college process to make sure you get out and see college campuses. Um, one of our positives of COVID is a lot of us have created virtual options as well. Um, so you do have the opportunity for us to log on and go on tour in real time with a current student tour guide. You also can come see us in person or um, as my colleagues have already shared, we are definitely ready and willing to talk to you guys. So you can also book an appointment with your assigned admissions counselor at any point in time. And I think I timed that out. Okay, y'all. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right, next up we have St. Mary's University. Hello, everyone. Let me just go ahead and start sharing. Okay. So uh, I'm representing St. Mary's University. My name is Destiny. I'm one of the admission counselors. So just to give you an idea about St. Mary's, we are located in San Antonio, Texas. So just to kind of give you an idea, why is this not working? Sorry, there you go. Let me do this again. Sorry, my computer is acting up and the slideshow is not working. So just to kind of give you an idea, so St. Mary's is located in San Antonio, Texas. Um, let me do this. There we go. Okay, sorry, got it working now. So St. Mary's is located in San Antonio, Texas. So San Antonio is located is the second largest city in Texas, and it's also the seventh largest city in the U.S. So just to kind of give you an idea of some of the culture of San Antonio, as you see some of the pictures. Um, and then as far as, um, so St. Mary's is a four-year private Catholic Marianist liberal, liberal arts university. It's the first Catholic university in Texas and the Southwestern United States. It's also a Hispanic, Hispanic serving institute. Our total enrollment at St. Mary's is 3,514 students. Our undergraduate enrollment is 2,300, so very much a small university. 
Um, just to kind of give you some of the fun facts. So our average classroom size is about 16 students per class. Our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. So basically you definitely get that mentorship from your professors and your professors very much know you personally. Uh, we have 11 NCAA Division II teams. Also, we just recently started our eSports team. This is its uh, starting year. So next year it'll be going on its second. 94% uh, of our professors hold a terminal degree. So what this means is pretty much that um, all that our professors have gone as far as they can go in their education. And then just a little bit of the demographics of St. Mary's, about 42% of our student population are male, about 58% are female. Um, and then just to give you an idea, so we do have the St. Mary's School of Business, which is the Grehe School of Business. So these are some of the popular majors, you know, accounting, marketing management, um, finance and risk management. Also our business school is AACSB accredited. So only the top 4% of the universities in the world have this accreditation for business specifically. Um, and then going into our College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences. So some of the popular majors are criminal justice, forensic science, criminology, psychology, political science, and exercise and sports science. Uh, along with this, you know, we do have a lot of uh, research opportunities and also study abroad programs as well. And then our School of Science, Engineering and Technology. So some of our popular majors are here are biology, biochemistry, computer science, mechanical engineering. Also our engineering program is ABIT accredited. And then just to kind of give you an idea of our majors that are offered, you know, broken down by um, schools and everything, we also have different minors as well that may not be as a part of the major program. And then we also have teacher certification combined degree programs as well. And then so we do have four different ways you can apply to St. Mary's University. You can apply directly through the St. Mary's website. You can apply through Apply Texas, Common App, or the Coalition. So the minimum requirements for application is your application itself and your high school transcripts. We also do accept optional materials for all applicants, such as personal statements, letters of recommendation, a resume, and additional writing samples. We do have a holistic review process. So I always like to say that, you know, the minimum requirements kind of are like a line drawing of you with supplementing those supp secondary materials. We kind of get a full picture color idea of who you are. And then just an example of some of our specialty programs. So we have the Grehe Scholars Program, Dean Scholars Program, those are tied into the business school. The Honors Program, which is regardless of all your majors, you just do need to meet the GPA requirements when you apply. We also have an Army and Air Force ROTC program. Uh, we also have a music scholarship. A fun fact about our music scholarship is that it is treated similarly to an athletic scholarship. We also have a Marianist Leadership Program. So St. Mary's is a Marianist Catholic and Marianist University, so it's a part of the Marianist charisms and, and educations and formations. Also, we do have an alumni scholarship and multiple athletic scholarships going back to those 11 NCAA Division II teams. And then just kind of, if you would like, you can scan that QR code and these are just different ways you can connect to campus, you know, on campus tours, I've guided campus tours, virtual information sessions, phone or video chats. That's a good handy little thing. And then just to kind of give you an idea, these are our social medias, feel free to call us. Also, you know, if you wanna email, call us, whatever that may be, that's our contact information. That's about it for me. Awesome, thank you. Next up, we have St. Peter's University. Let me start, <clears throat> just start sharing my screen. And, um, right. uh, is it sharing? Looks great. All right. So I am Alex Aquino Flores, one of the assistant directors of admissions at St. Peter's University. At St. Peter's, uh, one of our goals is to have students excel academically, lead ethically, and serve the community around them. So we are home to about 3,600 students, uh, meaning our class sizes are about maybe 18 to 22 students to, to a classroom with a 13 to one faculty to student ratio. Uh, we One of the things we focus heavily on is community service. So far we've We've accumulated about 50,000 hours worth of community service each year. Uh, 
one of our big focal points is a 95, uh, achieving a 94% job placement after graduation within the first year. Uh, being located in Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, we're only about 12 minutes from, this, from New York City, which is a great advantage we have with our Department of Internships. We're partnered with over 600 companies, some of them being located in New York City. We have over 50 majors and minors with state-of-the-art technology at our disposal with training rooms, cybersecurity centers, and nursing simulation labs. On campus, we have tons of activity. Not only do we have faculty dedicated to making sure there's always something to do on campus, we, we also have over student organizations and clubs to join as well as intramural sports. We are a division one facility housing 16 NCAA uh, sports. Uh, as you may know, most recently, I would say basketball has become our most popular program. We mo most of our students are commuter commuters with freshmen uh, staying on campus and living in traditional dorm style doubles triples and even singles. And after they go on to senior to their sophomore, junior and seniors, uh, they can go on to live in apartment style dorms. Uh, for the commuters, we do offer a free shuttle service that will get you around campus and around the area, as well as providing meal plans for all students, commuters and those who dorm alike. We, we have to make sure that all our students are well fed. So our application process, currently we focus mostly on the GPA. We are uh, SAT and ACT optional. And we are a rolling, currently a rolling admission. So we take applications all year round. So our tuition starts at about 40,000 and then with housing and uh, food included, it, it goes up to about 55,000. So for scholarships for our incoming un undergraduates, the scholarships start at 20,000 and can max out at about 25,000. For transfers, it will start at 15,000. So as I mentioned before, we are rolling admissions. We do were test optional and we do a holistic review of all your classes and all activities and extracurriculars that you have taken. So we do take that into account and make a decision from there. And I will be turning it to the next presenter. Thank you so much. Okay, next up we have Villanova University. All right, thank you. One sec. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining tonight. Um, last but you know, certainly not least, we have Villanova University. My name is Jamie Bowers. I'm an assistant director of admission in the Office of Undergraduate Admission, and I'll be with you for the next five or so minutes. Um, so Villanova University, we are a medium-sized private, obviously, as you already know, Catholic uh, university located about 12 miles west of Philadelphia. Um, fun fact, we are actually the only Augustinian, though, um, university in the entire country. Um, your second fun fact for the day is Villanova actually means new home. So, you know, we're hopeful that, you know, if you're interested and you apply, um, that maybe one day you can make Villanova your new home. Just to give you, you know, a quick overview of a glance, 
glance of campus, this is basically what it looks like. Um, so it's a pretty suburban campus, but we actually have two train lines, one on the left-hand side, and then you'll see here um, on the right-hand side, just kind of underneath the 12, um, we have two train lines that lead directly into the city of Philadelphia. Um, so it's super easy for our students to get in and out of the city, whether they wanna check out like a new restaurant, museum, um, or a sporting game, or they might also have their internship there. So I think you kind of get the best of both worlds. You know, you're in close proximity to the fifth largest city in the U.S., but you also have kind of the quaintness and all the, you know, green cuts of grass and more of that uh, suburban feel of campus. As I mentioned before, we are a medium-sized institution, so we have right around 6,700 students total. Average class size is about 26 students. Um, and then your, you know, student to faculty ratio is right around 11 to 1. So I know that's a common question. Uh, we'll get there. We do have four undergraduate colleges within Villanova University. You'll see them listed here. We've got our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Villanova School of Business, our College of Engineering, and then our Fitzpatrick College of Nursing. We do not offer general admission to Villanova University, so we do ask that students apply to one of these four colleges. Um, so when you're submitting the application, and I'll go over that process in just a bit, you do need to apply specifically into one of these four schools. Um, it's okay if you don't know exactly what you want to do. We just kind of ask that you somewhat have an idea. If you're totally undecided, that's okay. I might recommend our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and you can come in as an exploratory arts uh, student. We have over 80 different majors and minors. I also want to emphasize you're definitely not pigeonholed into one of these four schools. So for example, if you're admitted to our Villanova School of Business, you know, you could definitely, you know, pick up a Spanish minor um, or, you know, take a couple engineering classes if you're so inclined to do so. We do have a couple of prerequisites for some of our programs, um, like business. We do ask that students take calculus if it's offered at their high school, um, and engineering physics is a must, but all of that information can be found on our website. I just like to, to mention that to keep an eye out for that, depending on what major you might be interested in. I don't have a slide that has every single one of our majors. We do have over 80 of them, um, but if you just go right to, you know, programs.villanova.edu, you'll be able to see the full list, um, super comprehensive. Um, you can actually, like, make your own list of programs that you're interested in um, and pull up different, like, course catalogs, information, faculty profiles, all that fun stuff. So I encourage you to do so if you're interested there. Um, you know, kind of similar to the other, you know, universities that already presented tonight, you know, we have a really, you know, robust, you know, student life, I think. Um, we have a very much so uh, resident campus. So the overwhelming majority of our students live on campus. We actually have over 60% of our students live on campus all four years, which I feel like is pretty rare. Um, but we just require that students live on campus for their first two years. And then after that, if you'd like to move off campus, you have that opportunity to do so. Um, we have over 260 clubs and organizations, ranging from academic-based, interest-based, faith-based, anything and everything that you can think of. Um, just to name a few, you know, we have like our environmental club, our Black Student Union, um, VU Pride. Most recently, I found out we have a barbecue club. So anything that you might be interested in, we most likely offer, you know, a club or organization. We offer Greek life at Villanova. Um, and a really robust network of both, you know, club and intramural sports. Also like to highlight here our athletics. It's a really big part of the student experience. We have 24 NCAA Division I sports. I'm not sure if anybody had Nova going um, all the way in their bracket this year, but also pretty exciting that St. Peter's is also um, on this presentation. So a bummer they lost in the final four, but still a really great um, year for our Wildcats. But um, again, we have 24 NCAA you know, Division I sports. If D1 sports aren't your thing, no worries. Again, lots of club and intramurals to choose from. Um, definitely go to a game. You know, We have a lot of interest in both our men and women's basketball teams. They do work off of a lottery system because we have have so much interest, um, but they are free for all students. So definitely uh, check out a game if you're ever able to or uh, coming to campus. There are a couple different ways that you can apply to Villanova. All of the deadlines are right here. Um, before I talk a bit more about that, I will just let you know that um, we are a common application exclusive school. So I know that um, there's all different ways that you can apply to all different colleges, but we do actually only have one way at Villanova and that is through the common application. Um, but hopefully maybe that cuts down on the amount of individual apps you're filling out, but I think most schools uh, tonight were on the common app as well. 
Um, in addition to that, we'll take a look at your official high school transcript. Um, we are test optional for the upcoming year. So if there are any juniors, or I'm not sure if you're all juniors in the room, um, it is not required that you submit the SAT or ACT. If you are maybe a freshman or a sophomore in high school, stay tuned. We have not yet made a decision on that, but as soon as we know something, we'll let you know. Um, and then letters of recommendation, essays, all that fun stuff. A couple different ways that you can apply to Villanova. All of the deadlines are on here, but again, you can find all of this on uh, the website. But we do offer early decision one and two, early action and regular decision. And then these are just the ways that you can connect with us. Feel free to get in contact with people like me, an admissions counselor, you can get in contact with a current student here, or you can always just text a quick question to this number and we'll get back to you the same day. And um, that is all for my end. So thanks everyone. Awesome, thank you. All right, at this point, I'd like to welcome everyone back onto the screen. We're gonna hear from each of our presenters at least one more time. Awesome, thanks. Okay. Great. So um, I'm going to ask a couple questions here. What advice would you give someone kind of going through the search process now or kind of in the near future? And we'll go back to uh, Salve Regina University. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, you know, I, I think there's so much pressure with the college going process. So my, I guess my first piece of advice um, to kind of start us all off is take a step back. If you're feeling stressed about the process, um, and remind yourself that this can actually be kind of fun because it's a chance to get to know yourself and what your priorities are, what you want to do, getting to make your own decisions um, over the next four years and, and afterwards. So um, hopefully you can find some ways to actually have a little bit of mindfulness and, and appreciation for where you are and where you're going to be and get a little bit of enjoyment out of the process. Awesome. Thank you. Loyola University, New Orleans. Um, I would just remind everybody to be open in this process. I think all of us admissions reps who have been doing this a little while will tell you that um, every time we log on to one of these or we go to a college fair, there's a new college um, that I'm learning more about, that I'm getting to know, that I'm seeing. And just because you haven't seen anybody go to that school or know what it is doesn't mean it's a bad place and doesn't mean it's not the right place for you. So when you have these opportunities, it's great. Nights like tonight, you're hearing from very different places in very different areas of the country and you're getting a chance to be exposed to that and just make sure you keep an open mind during this process there could be a really awesome place for you that you just haven't gotten to know yet so that would be my advice that's great thank you st mary's university yeah so kind of similar to you know my fellow uh representatives have said is that i think what the important thing to remember is that you're gonna be at this place for a while, whatever institution you choose to attend. So make sure it's a place that you feel comfortable, but also on top of that, make sure it's a place that you feel you can thrive. So it's kind of like that double-edged look at what's gonna be best for you, you know, weigh out all your options, but definitely I recommend visiting campuses and actually physically being there as well to really see if you can envision yourself there in the future and for the long-term. Thank you very much. Uh, St. Peter's University. Uh, I know there's a lot of pressure in uh, having to know what you want to major in before you come in, but it's totally fine to come in undecided, but it's also good to not take too long so you don't want, end up wasting your time or end up wasting money. Thank you. And Villanova? Sure, yeah. I mean, echo what, you know, all of my colleagues said, I guess I would say, I know there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, your decision making, and I feel like it can be overwhelming. So sometimes I'll recommend for students to just think of the big three, you know, academically, financially, and environmentally. If you just kind of focus on your college search on those three areas, I think that can help narrow down your search a bit. Um, I think sometimes we'll recommend for students, you know, I would maybe apply between four to six colleges. Once you get more than that, I feel like sometimes it can be overwhelming. It's okay if you're applying, you know, to more than that, that's totally okay. But if you just kind of think about those three areas. I think that can help narrow down your search a bit. Awesome, thank you for that. All right, my next question here is, um, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school specifically? And we'll jump back up to Salve Regina. You know, Salve admits a pretty wide range of students. Um, most fall between a B plus and an A minus GPA. About a quarter are close to a 4.0, but then also a quarter are actually below a 3.2. Um, so 
uh, you know, obviously we love all of our students, um, but some of my favorite stories come from the students that were kind of on the lower end of our averages, but came to Salve and really found themselves, developed those habits um, and became A students. And so if you're kind of, you know, maybe a little stressed about a couple of C's here and there earlier in high school, um, but you really hit that academic stride, maybe in junior, senior year, you're really coming into your own and um, developing that confidence um, and you feel you have a lot of potential, we might be a good fit for a student like that. Um, and I encourage you to check us out. Thank you. Loyola University? Sure. Um, I think one of the big things I would like for people to take away anytime they have an interaction with Loyola is just our community is something quite special. So I know I talked a lot about the city in my presentation, but I think the city is also reflective of the culture we have on campus. Uh, there's diversity. It's a melting pot. There's lots of culture, activity, um, students kind of caring for each other and taking care of the community around them and really just bringing that creativity to light to support others. You know, you watch our um, marketing students are creating and graphic design students are creating PR and marketing and running our student bands on campus. And you just watch all these connections happen so quickly because we've got so many awesome creative minds that want to be something bigger and build something bigger and greater. Um, and it just is a really phenomenal community to watch and just watching these students bring their different backgrounds and knowledge and putting it all together um, makes us a really special place. So I know it was mentioned earlier, like I said, um, you got to see it to believe it. Um, so make sure as you're going through this process, come see these different schools, come see what we have to offer and come watch these campus communities in action. It'll really tell you where you're gonna be best and where you're gonna thrive. Thank you so much. St. Mary's University. Yeah, so speaking as obviously now I work for the university, but I was also an, I'm also an alumni of St. Mary's University. So speaking on my experience as a student, I also just graduated in 2020, so it's not like too long ago or anything like that. Um, but most definitely, I would say that the culture of St. Mary's is something very special. I've never really been at a place that someone, even like complete strangers or people that you just meet are very much there wanting to help you succeed. Like it's a very common thing, I guess, within the culture of St. Mary's. So I would kind of say it's very community-based and very selfless in a lot of ways. We're ready to help anyone that we can. Awesome, thank you. St. Peter's University. I would say being located in Jersey City, uh, right next to New York City, you have an opportunity to explore various cultures. And not only that, the campus itself is extremely diverse. We house people from all different creed races and colors. So you will be able to experience anything and everything you could imagine here at St. Peter's. Great, thank you. And Villanova? Yeah, I feel bad I didn't really get to touch too much on this on the shorter presentation, but service is a huge part of the Villanova culture. So if you're a student that has been really involved in community service in high school, or maybe you're a student that during college you're looking to get more involved, I think we have a lot of opportunities for you to do so. Um, our students complete over a quarter of a million hours of community service each year, which is pretty incredible. And it's totally voluntary. It's not a requirement. And we also have the largest student run Special Olympics event in the entire world. Um, so that happens every year during our fall festival. A really great time. Whole campus community comes together. We cheer on our fellow athletes. So again, if that's just something you might be like interested in or passionate about or want to get more involved with in college, um, you know, we have that and it might be a good fit for you. Thank you. All right, my last question here is, what is a myth you'd like to debunk on the admissions process? We'll jump back up to Salve. You know, I, I think sometimes there's um, this conception that private colleges are, are always going to be more expensive than public colleges that are that are in state. Um, but and, and also, I think, you know, sometimes students will come up to me at a college fair and they'll say, well, what's your cost? Um, but what they really want to be asking is, what's my likely net cost um, after financial aid? So um, just keep in mind that lots of us have financial aid. There's many different forms of it, um, but we work really hard to get those costs down. Um, at Salve, we award over $40 million a year in financial aid, um, and we're able to make that cost much more realistic and approachable for our families. Thank you. Loyola University? 
Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's, it's so much a, a myth as just, I want to remind you guys that we also are all human beings um, as admissions officers. And we do, you know, we are out there doing our best to promote our universities, but we also just want what's best for you in the process. So we are meant to be alleviators of stress. You shouldn't be stressed out talking to us. You shouldn't be worried about talking to us. You shouldn't be worried telling us if you have concerns or questions. That's what we're here to do. And if we don't know what's going on, we can't help you and help facilitate that process. Because at the end of the day, we want you to come to our college, but we want students that want to come and want to stay. So we're trying to find out too, if we're the best fit for the long-term for you and help you figure that out so you can make the right choice. So remember, we're humans, we're, your, we're allies, we're resources, and there's no reason to be worried about sharing or talking with your admissions rep um, at any point in the process. So thank you, St. Mary's University. Um, I don't know that it's so much a myth as, well, I guess maybe in a, in a way it is that it's kind of, we always have that fear to ask questions or always kind of like we're, we fear the unknown. So I think something to consider is that if even though you may be new to the application process for college and everything like that. Similarly, you mentioned, don't be afraid to ask questions and also don't be afraid to advocate for yourself. So like, you know, sometimes if something isn't as favorable, sometimes there's a little wiggle room or sometimes there's a little bit of something that like you can work on. So just because you hear something hard, doesn't mean it's like a hard answer, doesn't mean that it can't be negotiated in some way. Awesome, thank you. St. Peter's? Um, as an admissions counselor, our only goal isn't really to just, you know, get the students to come and, you know, pay to our school. It's really to make sure we can accommodate and every student and make sure they can get every resource available so that they can excel academically and achieve all the goals they have after graduation. Thank you. And Villanova. I feel like this was touched on a little bit already, but I just want to reiterate, and I'll just speak for Villanova, but I have a feeling everyone would probably agree, you know, if an institution is test optional, that truly does mean optional. I think so many times students feel like they have to submit something and that's better than nothing. And again, at least for Villanova, that's definitely not the case. Optional truly means optional. I always tell students what we don't know is what we don't know. We will never assume that a score is lower or anything like that if a student does not submit scores. So my recommendation may be, you know, check out what like the middle 50% is of test scores of that institution. If you're falling in that range, maybe feel free to go ahead and submit, um, but also don't feel pressured if you don't think it's a, you know, accurate representation of your academic ability. So optional truly means optional when it comes to testing. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, well, that's going to bring us up to the time this evening. So I want to send a big thank you to our presenters for your time and putting together all this information for us. We really appreciate it. And to our participants for jumping in uh, and being with us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick survey. We really appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. There will be some on Sunday, uh, April 24th. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other recordings uh, if you missed one or want to go back, uh, and that would be located at strivescan.com NCCAA. And that's a wrap for us. Thank you so much again. Have a good night.